If you were to ask me what is the most important aspect of a person becoming an effective leader, I would tell you it is purpose. It is always at the top. And we're going to focus on understanding the source of true leadership, which is the discovery of your personal purpose. If you study great leaders in history, as far back as the great deliverer Moses, you would discover that he had an encounter that gave him a sense of purpose that changed his life completely. He went from being an employee of his father-in-law to a deployed person who was a victim of humanity. And when you discover a sense of purpose, that's what happens to you. I want to begin with a few comments about leadership. Leadership is both an art and a science. It's an art because it has to do with some natural inherent things that you possess. You were born with with leadership potential. Every human being was born with it. Very few people actually discover that. It's an art also because it is a matter of an inherent gift and talent that the Creator put in everyone. There's something that you were born with that the world needs, and that makes you a natural leader. However, most people die as followers. Also, it's important to remember that leadership is innate but also learned. That's the science part of leadership. And that's why we come to a conference like this. There are some things about leadership that you just have to learn. And we call these, of course, skills. And that's why you need a process of education. In, in the study of history of leaders, most of the leaders in our recent history, maybe two, 300 years of history, they were made leaders by circumstances. When you think of the present day cadre of leaders, especially in the third world countries, <clears throat> you will probably quickly realize that most of the people who are leaders in developing countries had no training in leadership. They are simply products of a struggle. They became important because of something that they achieved not because it is something they learned. For example, Mr. Nelson Mandela never took a course in leadership. He was a lawyer. He didn't study leadership, but circumstances created him. And so many of the leaders today are products of situations that caused them to have to produce hidden potential that they didn't even know they had. It's amazing that most of the ones that I meet personally always tell me I never intended to be a leader. I just had a passion for something. And this is how leadership is born. So there's a part of leadership that you must learn. And this is why it's important every year to attend events like this, because there's some things you learn that you just have to get by education. Thirdly, leadership is inherent but must be developed. Just like a seed has a tree in it, but it must become the tree, so you have a leader in you but you must become that leader. And that means that leadership is built in, but it must be cultivated. And point number four, a true leader learns from others, but never become them. It's important for you to be constantly submitted to the process of learning. And I think this is one of the weaknesses of some leaders. They and they are in love with their titles and their positions so much that they cancel the need for education. They believe that they have arrived. They think that because they have a, a highly respected position or because they have a title that is re re kind of revered, then they stop reading books, they stop attending seminars, they stop uh, refining their skills, and they, they live under this deception that they have arrived at a point where they don't need any more help. That is a fool with a title. Leaders are always in the classroom of life. You never graduate from the school of learning as a leader. Therefore, leadership must be cultivated. There's some attitudes that I want to recommend to you that you must cultivate as a leader. 
And the first one is this. True leaders realize that leadership has more to do with mindset than with methods. You can learn all the skills of organizational development and still have a failing organization. You can study all the principles of leadership and still be a follower. And that's because information doesn't necessarily guarantee transformation. And so leaders are those who understand that techniques and methods are not enough. There's something else that makes you a leader, and that has to do with mindset. In other words, a leader is one who distinguishes himself from others by attitude, not by aptitude. Many people with PhDs cannot lead a dog to eat. So education is not enough. Being uh, intellectually stimulated doesn't make you a world leader or a community leader or even a leader in your department. <clears throat> you will discover in reality that most of the educated people are hired by those who have no education. Most of the great leaders in the world dropped out of school and then they hired their friends who graduated because leadership has very little to do with aptitudes. It has more to do with attitude. An attitude is a result of a person's belief system. And it's that belief system that creates what I call the spirit of confidence. A person who discovers the foundation of leadership, and that is what we're going to talk about today, that purpose issue, they develop naturally an attitude of confidence. What makes a person confident? You cannot fake confidence. You cannot pray for it. You cannot fast for confidence. You cannot confidence. You, you cannot get confidence by people laying hands on you or something. Confidence comes from the inside and it's a product of conviction, a belief system. And that's why it becomes a natural part of your attitude. Now, why is attitude is so uh, as, is, why is that so important as a leader? Because attitude is contagious. You can walk into a room and affect the room by your attitude. When a leader walks into a place, somehow you just know that's, that, that's, that, that's the leader. They don't say a word. They don't dress differently. But there's something that they are emitting. And what they are emitting is, is a spirit of an attitude that you can't really define. It, it's this sense of confidence that they don't manufacture. That comes from a belief system that they have about themselves and about the world. And that's what we're going to talk about in this segment. Leadership attitude determines the atmosphere in the organization. And that's why it's important for you to capture attitude. There are people who run departments and the whole department has low morale. And they blame the people for the atmosphere. You all are lazy. You have no interest in working. It's not the, pers it's, it's not the staff's problem if there's low morale. It's a leadership problem. A leader can walk into a depressed environment and in 10 minutes, there's inspiration in the room. And everybody's ready to go for another 10 years. So managers are not necessarily leaders because a manager can be a part of the depression. Leaders have an attitude that is contagious. And when they show up, the whole place changes. How do you get that contagious attitude? I'm going to show you this morning. The art of leadership. First of all, leadership is about service. It's about empowerment, not power. Most people think that if they are powerful, they are leaders. That's not true. Power doesn't make you a leader. Leaders distribute power. Small minds collect power. Great minds get rid of it. One of the most incredible things that I've ever seen in my lifetime is the life of Mr. Nelson Mandela again. This man to me is one of the greatest 
leaders in our lifetime. Not because he went to prison, even though that's a great accomplishment and he paid the price for the deliverance of a people, but what makes him even greater than that is the fact that he got rid of power. If you were in prison for 25 years, you should have a right to be in the presidency for 25 years. But he only served one term. He got rid of power. He gave it away. Why? Because when you are great, you don't need power. <laughs> Greatness comes from your sense of purpose to empower people. Leadership is not about really getting people to follow you. It's about purpose. And this is where we begin our focus. Leadership is not about focusing on getting people to follow you. Leadership is about pursuing a purpose. It is that purpose that literally attracts people to you. It is your passion for that purpose that makes people believe in you to the point where they are willing to sacrifice their own priorities for your sake. So therefore, people really don't follow you. They follow the purpose that you are passionately pursuing. And this can become very confusing to a person who is very shallow because they think that people are coming after them. And they begin to think that they are all of that, if you know what I mean by that. They think that people are following them because of their personality or because of their greatness or something. People are really pursuing what you are passionately pursuing. That attracts them. And when you cease pursuing that, then they start leaving you. Can I put it again this way? There is a leader trapped in every human being on earth. There are 7 billion humans on earth who are leaders. The problem is they will die as followers because the leadership that's trapped on the inside is never manifested. Why? Because the environment in which we live, the culture in which we've been inculcated, does not code for leadership discovery. Matter of fact, 90% of you probably came from a cultural environment where you've been educated to be employed and not deployed. So there is no stimulation of your leadership ability. It's trapped under your, what I call, a career. Nothing can destroy a great human faster than a culture that contains them. And so leadership is something that is always below the surface. And it takes the environment being conducive to manifest that leader. Leadership potential resides in every human being. Now why is this so important for you to also accept? Because if you believe that, then you treat everybody with respect and you also don't cancel people. Every human being is a walking treasure chest. And your goal in life is to help them discover that treasure and then to manifest it and to serve it to their generation. That's your job as a leader, is to produce the leaders that are around you. Because they must understand that they were born to lead, but they must go through a process to become that leader. And the goal of leaders should be to create an environment for people to discover themselves. And that leads me then to my next point. True leadership is self-discovery. Can you say that with me? True leadership is self-discovery. Say it one more time. True leadership is self-discovery. What does that mean? The heart of true leaders is simply one who discovered who they really are. What they were born to do. They discovered it. And then they decide with all their minds to become it. They also decide to pay the price to become it. Some of you in this room are on the verge of, of slipping back into mediocrity. You are being tempted to become comfortable with life as you have achieved it. And that's a boring future. Maybe that's why you came to this summit this week, to be reconnected to your real self as a leader. 
I want to define leadership for you, as I will always do, and it took me 30 years to write this one sentence. Leadership is defined as the capacity to influence others through inspiration. The inspiration is generated by a passion. The passion comes from a vision that the person sees. The vision is produced or birthed by a conviction that occurs in the person. Deep conviction. The conviction comes from a discovery of purpose. Purpose. The best way to define how you become a leader is to look at this sentence and turn it upside down. Leadership is not a pursuit, it's a result. True leaders never seek to be leaders. Let me show you what I mean by that. First, they discover a sense of purpose. The purpose then produces a conviction. The conviction produces a picture that they see of a better future. That vision is what makes them passionate. Now we get into influencing other people. Once you have a passion for what you are pursuing, the passion becomes contagious and it inspires other people. Once you inspire people, you don't need to manipulate people. True leaders do not manipulate. They inspire. But here's the problem. If you cannot inspire, you manipulate. The problem is, once you manipulate, you're no longer a leader. You're a con artist dictator. So leadership has a fine line between manipulation and inspiration. Manipulation, inspiration. Stay away from manipulation. It cancels your leadership. Once you inspire people, then you influence them. What is leadership? Influence. And if you influence people, they call you a leader. Influenced people make you a leader. What did I say? Okay, write that down. Influenced people make... Once people are influenced by you, not coerced, not threatened, not manipulated, but influenced by you, by inspiration, you automatically are made a leader. If you don't follow this process, you're going to have a hard life with a title. <laughs> You'll have a great title and a whole lot of stress. Because you have, manipulation is hard work. And it's dangerous too, because people could kill you. Most of them will. Leaders get energy from people who they inspire. But you get depression from those who you manipulate. So we must discover then how does this work. Let me just break it down in some detail real quick. The first foundation of leadership is what? Purpose. Purpose is the original intent for a thing. And I want to focus on this for a few minutes before we take a break for the next session. Purpose is so important that purpose is a prerequisite for conviction. If you have no conviction, you will never have a true vision. Vision is purpose in pictures. Vision is conviction in technicolor. I have a dream. I see the day coming soon when little white boys and little black girls will walk down the road hand in hand. This guy was seeing things. Where did that picture come from? A deep conviction that a man should not be judged by the color of his skin, but by the content of his character. He had a conviction and he showed up in pictures. Do you have that yet?
Some of you felt my conviction last night. You connected with an energy you couldn't describe. Because I seep it. Because of my conviction. The vision then is what creates the passion. You decide to go to what you see. You see another world and you decide, I'm going there. And by the way, true leaders are willing to go there alone. <laughs> because most of the time, folks may not get the vision yet. So you got to start walking. And sometimes you walk alone for a little while until they realize, you know something? She's serious. <laughs> People will normally catch on later. And they run up as if they've been with you all along. How you doing? I'm so glad I've been with you, Sensi. I was thinking with you. <laughs> I was thinking with you for five years. Although I was criticizing you all along, I was thinking with you. All of a sudden, they want to be with you. Why? Because you're moving now, see? Yeah. So don't worry about critics. They are your best friends later. Stay with your passion. Because passion is what inspires people. Inspiration is simply generation of meaning in other people. Write this down, please, because some of you got to define this first. You inspire people when you give them a meaning for their own lives. That's called inspiration. Where you, you cause them to want to do something. This is why true leadership gives other people a sense of significance. They find their own lives in your life. They connect their lives with this massive thing that you are seeing, and that gives them a sense of value. That's leadership. Leadership is not about you going somewhere by yourself alone. It's you walking alone and people connecting to it, and they find their own walk. They walk with you. Because they want to go where you're going. Once you inspire people, then you influence them. Now, here's what influence is. Influence in leadership is when someone submits their authority to yours. Every human being has an authority. They were born with it. There's an area of their life that they were born to serve the world with. There's a gift that they have. Leaders provide a context for that person to serve that gift. So they actually submit their authority to you so that they can fulfill their own authority in the context of the corporate authority. Uh, authority. And therefore, leadership creates an environment for everyone to feel and be important. It's not about people making you significant. It's about you making the people significant. Are you understanding me? So leadership doesn't revolve around the leader. It actually revolves around the people around the leader. He gives them meaning, and they submit the authority to the passion. And once that happens, then the people commit themselves to the vision. And that's called corporate hope. Leadership is about that. Now, what's important about this process? Number one. Because if you don't have number one, nothing else happens. Do you see the relationship? No purpose, then there's no conviction. No conviction, then there's no vision. If there's no vision, then there's no inspiration. No inspiration, then there's no passion. No passion, no inspiration, then there is no influence. And that's when you got to use a gun to threaten people to do what you say, to become a dictator, not a leader. Leadership, therefore, begins with purpose. It begins with this foundational thought. Uh, here's some concepts I want you to remember, if you can write them down very fast, and make sure to get a copy of the CD. First of all, leaders are more concerned about expressing themselves than proving themselves. A true leader don't have anything to prove to you. Small minds like to prove things. True leaders are too busy to try and prove something to you. <laughs> they found something more important than trying to impress you. They are more concerned about getting to a place in the future more than trying to impress you 
about who they are. Secondly, leaders are individuals who have declared independence from the expectations of other people. Most of us live to please people. What a lousy life. Because most people's expectations of you are so low, you'll always hit it. Much of what you're proud of, God's ashamed of. Because you satisfied people instead of God. And his vision of you is always bigger than the one you thought you had. I like the way he says it in the book of uh, Ephesians with the Apostle Paul, the first great apostle of the church. You know, Paul was the, the, the masterful leader. Paul says, look, God will never do what you ask him. That blew my mind when I read that. God will never do what you ask him to do. He will never actually do what even you imagine. Why? He says, your imagination is always too low. That's mind-blowing to me. He will always do what? Exceeding. He will always exceed what you imagine. Because it's still too small. Let's, let's get bigger. Ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you the honest truth. I am still shocked at what's happening to me. I had a dream. I had a burden. I had a vision. I had an anger against oppression. I had a passion for third world, my own people. And I, I know what it is to feel that, that, that pressure of, of, of dehumanization. I know that. But I had no idea that I'd be doing what I'm doing with governments, world leaders, sitting in the Knesset, talking to the leaders of Israel. I mean, the center of the Bible is Israel. And I'm talking to the Knesset leaders. I'm sitting there thinking, what am I doing here? God will never do what you dream. It's too small. So he says, please dream. Give me something to do. <laughs> Leaders do not clone themselves. You're not, listen, if you want to clone yourself, you got an ego problem. <laughs> And ego is one word from egg. Go hatch yourself. <laughs> you know, uh, there are people around you who want you to be just like them. They want to they wanna clone. True leaders hate clones. They love diversity. They want to see the beauty of your unique personality. They want you to become yourself. By the way, it's cheaper to be yourself. I saw a guy some years ago walking down the Atlanta airport, and that, I think that they were celebrating uh, Elvis Presley's birthday or something. You know, he was dead, of course. And I saw this guy walking down Atlanta airport with all the Elvis regalia on. And I'm sitting there thinking, that's an expensive suit. He's dumb. Just put on your own blue jeans, man. <laughs> what he had on must have cost about, you know, $5,000 worth of stuff, all this glitter and everything. I'm thinking, Man, just put on a t-shirt. And I got a lesson that day. It's expensive to imitate people. Tell you, David, be yourself and save your money. <laughs> Leaders don't imitate people, and they don't want imitations. They want to transfer purpose, not personality. <laughs> 